Happy new comic book day, webheads. That's right, it's another new comic book day. But what I want to know in the comments below is where do you guys store all those comic books? Hey, all my webheads out there. Welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0. And fans, I am your host, Mike Spider Slayer. Getting ready to bring you another episode of Spider Slayer's Comic Book Hall. Fans, this is episode 446, and this is the video series where each and every week I show you, the fans, what I pick up at my comic book store, which is Comic Central right behind me. They always provide the best customer service and the best comic books and best prices. So, guys, Let's not waste any more time. Let's get started with this week's comic book haul. And as always, we have the mysterious black bag. And what's inside, you soon shall find out. And it's a pretty big week, I guess. There's one book in particular that is highly anticipated. And babooshka, there it is. There is the haul. That's what's there. What did I pick up? Well... We wound up picking up a couple packs of uh, bags and boards here. I had to get a like a golden age bag and board for Last Ronin because I forgot to pick that one up. So we got that to start. So let's start off here. What's on on top is the Independence. So the first thing we're gonna kick off with is Firepower Issue Five. Fantastic book. Love this series from Robert Kirkman. We get to see our two main characters, Owen, uh, was it Kelly and Owen, I think his name is, and they were at a dinner date, and now we get the people from the Earth Scorch clan uh, invading him and uh, his wife, and what's really cool about this book is there's always great action, and I do love the artwork by Samney in here. I think it's phenomenally done, and uh, it's always a good page turner, so definitely recommend Firepower. This is issue five. All right, next we wind up getting the Walking Dead Deluxe. This is issue two. Gotta love the cover here where Rick is in Atlanta and uh, he's being overrun by the zombies. That is awesome. Always a nice visual treat when you read The Walking Dead in color. It's like a completely new experience reading the story all over again this way. And, uh, you know, get you caught up without having to go back in those long boxes or short boxes to read this story. Check out this grotesque artwork in there, man. It's so awesome. Really cool. The Walking Dead Deluxe. All right. So speaking of zombie books, we have Year Zero, Volume 2, Issue 1. I really enjoyed the first volume of this series. It was probably my favorite series out of all the AWA books. Uh, getting a different perspective on everybody who's dealing with this zombie apocalypse here. And we get a bunch of new people here. A uh, little graphic there, can't show that. But we got this going on in here. So here's some of the artwork here. And check out this. That is awesome, this lion eating this zombie. And I have a feeling maybe this second volume is gonna do much better uh, than the first one. And I gotta, you gotta love this cover. That cover is gorgeous. So that's Year Zero, Volume Two, Issue One. Another book that recently came out, I think it came out last week, but Diamond was shorted their copies or my, my shop was shorted copies because of Diamond. This is Chu, this is issue four as we get to see Agent Chu's sister as the bad guy and we get to see her perspective. The artwork is very distinct, I love it. I've thought that I would only enjoy Rub Gullery's artwork when he did the last volume, but I've learned to love this art and the coloring is right there. It makes everything pop. So good. I love this book. It's so well done. So this is issue four of the series. If you haven't read the original volume, I say go back and read that. You'll have a better appreciation of this second volume here. All right, next we have a new number one from DC Black Label. This is uh, issue one of six, Jeff Lemire's Sweet Tooth. Uh, this is called The Return of Sweet Tooth. So I never read the original volume of this character, and I heard this got optioned for a movie, and I felt, well, let me see if I can, you know, actually read this character from the second volume and get an understanding of what happens, okay? So, this could be good. I could be completely lost. 
hopefully, you know, I will pick it up, you know, see what happens with it. So that's Sweet Tooth, The Return. I People told me that this was a great series, so we'll see what happens. All right. Next, we wound up getting this book that um, my comic book shop gave me for free. There was someone uh, throwing around their your their own created comic book, and my shop knows I do this channel and whatnot. And they said, "Hey, you can promote this on your channel." And this is card called Hard Body. This is issue one. Okay, so I don't know really what's going on in this, but it looks like some old guy that's got pieced together to look like a bodybuilder. So it looks like like this book is all about bodybuilding because there's all these big bulky guys in there and whatnot. So I don't know. I don't know if this is, you know, going to be worth my read. But you know, I'm happy to promote anybody that goes out there and creates their own comic book. So that's Hard Body Issue One, completely free. All right, and then the big independent book for the week, guys is crossover and i wound up getting three separate covers for it we got that main cover there that very much intrigues you right from the start when the boy is reading comic books and he blows your mind then we got this particular cover here and then we wind up getting this uh one another one of these uh i don't know if it's a one in ten or whatnot but i love this one as they're like something's going on here but they're flipping through comic books and i think that's really cool so what does the interior artwork look like in crossover well let's check it out here all right so here we go here's some of the interior arc here's your your you know first glance at this art you know it has that very comic book style of artwork in here it looks a little darker based off of the cover colors here it looks like they're in a comic book shop or whatnot I'm so curious to see what this book is about, man. I cannot wait to read this book. So there you have it, crossover issue one. Maybe I'll get time to do a review on it. Looking forward to it. All right, so now heading to DC. We have DC Batman The Adventures Continues, issue six. Dude, this cover is sweet. I love it, man. Just It screams animated series all over it. Look at the Joker's teeth and Harley, Batman running, Robin. Dude, they all look great in there. So, so good. So here's some of the interior art for this particular issue. Okay. So we have that there. And then I'll show you another page. I'm actually one issue behind on this right now. And here we have that there too. So there we have it. We have Batman The Adventures Continues. This is issue six. So speaking of more Batman, we got Batman issue 102. This is the Ghost Maker, another new uh, character created by Tynion. So let's see here's some of the interior artwork in here. And so this is different, you know. Obviously, we're kicking off a new story arc, which is kind of cool after this whole Joker War situation. So here's some more artwork in there as well. So there you have it, and we'll see what the Ghost Maker is all about. Is he worth hyping up? You know, I don't know. We'll see. So that's Batman issue 102. Then with that, I had to get the variant cover of Ghost Maker because I thought this one was pretty neat as he's kind of like shadowing off the cover. So that's cool. And then next, we wind up getting DC's Dead Planet, issue 5 of 7. This book is so good, man. The end of the last issue was awesome. Our heroes are fighting probably their biggest adversary when it's dealing with the anti-life equation at this point, right? So there we have DC's Dead Planet. Here's some of the interior artwork there. And we got it right there. So really cool. Let's see if we have one more page here. Oh, nothing knocking my socks off there, but here's some more artwork there. All right. And now it's time for the Facebook shout outs. All right, webheads, this week's Facebook group page shout outs has a theme. That's right, guys. We're showing off some of the coolest comic rooms that were showed off on the group page. So the first one that we're going to show off is from Brett Weston. He goes, my office slash den setup. Not shown here are my 17 short boxes of comics kept upstairs in the closet. Really cool room. I love the Batman black and white statues. They look really cool. Next. Next, we have 
from David Richard. He's got his room filled with CGC graded comic books. We get to see short boxes on a cabinet as well and a Thor poster there on the left side. That's really awesome when you can display all those cool CGC graded comic books. The next one we have is Leanne Faitha who doesn't have a large space, but is making a very good impact with a bookshelf on the right, which looks like a whole bunch of trades, some action figures on the left. We got some short boxes on that desk and a nice little chair to organize everything just nice and perfect. The next one I'm going to show you is kind of like a store. This one goes to Eric Reese. goes, room picture day? He goes, there are four more rows of long boxes behind me. And check out this room. I mean, there's a shelf full of action figures. There's actually peg hooks in this room. Like he's selling these action figures. Really badass to see this. And look at all those short boxes on the bottom. And then last but not least, webheads. We wind up having a room here done by Robert Arena. And this one looks really cool because all his short boxes are, I think, Marvel or DC designed boxes. And uh, I didn't even know they made that many of them, but that looks really cool as it adds a lot of character instead of those plain white short boxes. And I love all the posters above it. And it looks like there's some Marvel Legend characters there as well. Really awesome room, guys. Thank you so much for providing these great pictures. There was a lot more. I just couldn't show them all. But if you you guys want to show your hauls your collection or whatnot just go on to my facebook group page called comic book corner 2.0 webhead unite and you never know you might get a shout out on next week's haul and we're back so we just talked about deceased dead planet um now we have the deceased dead planet issue 5 variant this is the swamp thing uh, variants. That is so cool, man. Look at this skeleton popping out of them and the vines growing everywhere. We got little moss there too. So that's a really cool uh, variant. And now we're heading to Marvel where we got Captain Marvel issue 23, The Clash of the Centuries. Now, I must say when it came to, to the first issue of this story arc, I was not a huge fan of it because we did this in like the end days of Captain Marvel and now they're touching back on this story again. So I, I don't know what the purpose is of this is. Maybe it's introducing a new character because it looks like we got a different character here. I don't know. I mean, Kelly Thompson, for the most part, has been writing a very good story here. So I'm looking forward to seeing what's happening with Captain Marvel. Hopefully this story picks up a little bit. So that's issue 23. All right. Next, we have the continuation of Black Widow. This is issue three. This has been really well done as well. Another Kelly Thompson book. Here's some of the interior artwork in this issue. So we have the White Widow in there. I love the artwork in this book. I think it's kind of cool. So check out this fighting sequence. That's neat. That's a sweet two-page spread right there. All right. And then next, we have the X of Swords continuation so we have um x of swords part 12 of 22 this is x-men issue 14 with apocalypse on the cover i think that's a really nice looking cover as well and obviously we have apocalypse in this book and he's uh hooking up with his wife again which i think is actually kind of cool and then are we getting some battle action starting here now now that Everybody has their swords, the good guys and the bad guys. Can we have the tournament begin? Who will die? Who will live? Who will go off into oblivion? I don't know. We'll see. But this is the X of Swords issue 14 or chapter 12 X-Men issue. We know what it is. It's X of Swords. <laughs> so now we have this one, part 13. So we got that one as well. So this one has Storm on the cover. Just making sure I got the right ones because they all look the same. That's an interesting cover, right? So here's the interior artwork in this one. The last issue that had Storm in it with Black Panther, I wasn't a huge fan of. The inking looks very heavy on this particular book. Look at that. But again, it continues the story. We'll see what happens going forward with this one. X of Swords, I'm hoping for this action to pick up here. It's kind of died down a little bit for me. All right, next, another really good story is Star Wars Issue 8. We're learning about this, um, this commander here that I guess is like 
you know, Grand Moff Tarkin's, like, I guess, apprentice or whatever it is, and uh, she wants to be just like him, and she blames herself kind of for his death. And uh, I think she's an interesting character, you know? And there's a lot of action going on in Star Wars. The time period's always good because it takes place between Empire and Return of the Jedi. But the best book going right now, I think, is Darth Vader. I've said this a couple of times now. Check out Darth Vader if you haven't yet. But this is good. So this is Star Wars. This is issue 8. Alright, next from Marvel, we have um, John Walker, U.S. Agent. So we have that cover right there. Okay, and so here's the interior artwork in this book. So I don't know too much about U.S. Agent, but I wanted to give this a try because it's a new number one. So I'm like, eh, I'll see what happens with it. So we have that right there. Okay. So we got that. And then I that was the variant cover, and I also got this cover, which I think this cover is actually better. Because <laughs> he's like he's like on the couch and there's like all these bad guys there and they're like all beat up and he's just like skull <laughs> and he's got like this he's got that US agent emblem on his shield so that's pretty cool and he's drinking the energy drink <laughs> that's kind of cool so we wind up getting that and then we have Marvel's uh, the Amazing Spider-Man issue 51 LR as it continues the battle with you know his Spider-Man family which I think is a little bit drawn out we still have Sin Eater in this book as well. A lot of flashback stuff going on. Here's some Black Cat in this issue. Um, here's some more artwork here. This looks actually pretty good. I like the way uh, Felicia looks in this issue. I just want to know where we're going with it. Obviously, MJ makes her return back into the series also. So what part does she play? Um, is Are we going back to one more day you know is it going to be reversed but i want this whole spider family thing taken care of right so that's cool amazing spider-man issue 51 lr we see where it goes and then i wind up getting thor issue 9 this is a new story arc from donny cates prey starts here uh as we get thor's alter ego is back um and i forgot his name off the top of my head but we'll see what happens. Looks like it gives you a little bit of a back history of the character. Um, so here's some more artwork in here too. Dude, this has so much of an independent feel. And that's what I love about Thor. It doesn't feel like, I guess, a Marvel book in many ways. I just, I love the artwork. I love the way it is. And uh, yeah, man, I got nothing but good things to say about Thor. It's been so enjoyable. And now it looks like it's just going to pick up once again after we had a two-part story arc that was just kind of like, you know, we're chilling out for a little bit. Now things are picking up once again. So that's Thor issue nine. And then I also wound up getting the Jenny Freshen variant. This is the Phoenix variant. That's really cool as it has like Jane Foster Thor on there. So that's awesome, man. Really cool. And then... I wound up having the um, Web of Venom, Empire's End, Issue 1. Looking forward to this particular book. <laughs> Check out the inside here. Can't wait to see how this ties in to the end of Empire. Maybe, the you know, Noah is defeating um, the Kree and the Scroll, But you get to see his demons making his way towards, the, uh, towards Earth. So yeah, this is going to be a cool, cool story there. Dude, I'm so looking forward to that. Then I want to get in the variant cover as it just says, Null is coming, Web of Venom. And it's just all black and white. So that's really cool. And then last but not least, I wind up getting the two issues of Wolverine, Black, White, and Blood. I wind up getting one cover and then a variant cover. So those ones look very cool. And I'm assuming everything is black, white, and red in here. Yep, so there you have it. And these are like my three favorite color combinations for some reason. So seeing this with Wolverine, I think it's pretty badass. It'll be very gory. <laughs> you know, check it out. It's like something like Sin City, right? You know, that's what you expect, something like a movie. So there you have it. So there you guys have it. There is the haul for the week. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And guys, hopefully you picked up all the comics you wanted this week. And guys, of course, if you want to become a member of that Facebook group, don't forget, join 
Comic Book Corner 2.0 Webheads Unite. All I gotta do is approve you, and you're set to go. And until next time, you can check out content right here. And this is Mike Spider Slayer signing off, and I'll see you guys real soon. Take care, guys. Bye.